welcome back everybody. Um, another fun video here at Blue Glow Electronics. This is part six in the series of the, uh, the Dynaco Mark III builds or rebuilds. Um, super frustrated today. This is a uh, large selection uh, of, as you can see, um, what you call Teflon wire, uh, Teflon coated silver wire, otherwise known as PTFE wiring. And I keep a large selection of it here on coax and, uh, you know, shielded wire for uh, speaker, not speaker runs, but uh, audio wire runs, all sorts of different sizes, shapes, uh, varying colors, uh, and braided, not braided, etc. And uh, I love using this stuff. However, if you've never worked with PTFE wire, you cannot grab a pair of wire strippers and strip this stuff effectively. It is a uh, it's a royal pain. This stuff is um, oh, I love that one. It's kind of a uh, green yellow, I mean green purple, um, white combo here. But um, you can't strip this stuff with a normal wire strippers. Um, the actual coating um, is kind of heat bonded onto the silver core on this stuff. And so you have to use a special type of wire stripper. A uh, regular one will do nothing but kind of start to pull this stuff apart. Uh, maybe I can give you a demo here in a second. But um, something you use here called a uh, thermal wire stripper that um, is designed. This is a Teldyne. This is probably the most common model out there. It's the strip all. And um, let me see if I can show you here with the other hand. Basically, what you do is um, you plug it in, you turn it on. And then when you push down this button and close these two things together here, if you notice there's a notch here in the middle, um, in the middle of each of these little uh, thermal elements here. And so when you push the button and close it, if you'll watch, this thing will, when they start glowing red hot. And what that does is uh, you have the little wire core in the middle there and it strips it off. But if you'll notice, only one of mine is heating up this morning, so my little element on the upper part is burnt out, um, which means I'm not going to be able to strip wires effectively. Ideally, both of those heat up, and then um, you kind of have your wire stuck in the middle here like this. You close down on it, they heat up, you pull the wire out, and the uh, all the coating comes off, and you have your nice little silver wire there in between. Well. For whatever reason this morning, my thermal wire stripper has decided to let me down. And lo and behold, I had a backup wire stripper here. This is a uh, Ampanol uh, Model TS-1 thermal wire stripper I picked up new in the box at a ham fest somewhere along the way. And I brought it home and I plugged it in. <laughs> I've had it. I've had it for a long time. But I, I got it off the shelf. I plugged it in. I, that's the reason I bought it was kind of a backup. And the same concept, this little element here on the front is supposed to heat up. You kind of stick the wire in here, move it over, it starts uh, melting the plastic off, and then you pull the wire out. Well, lo and behold, even though this was supposedly new in the box, and I picked it up, like I said, a ham fest, it does not work either. It's the first time I've ever tried to use it, so it's, uh, it's either burn up or uh, factory default. No, I guess somebody pawned it off on me at a ham fest, and I just didn't know it. So. I'm going to tell space today. I cannot strip um, silver coated wire, which is what I plan to wire everything up inside this thing with. So um, I'm going to have to order a new element here. And I've also been looking at Heiko, the same people that make my wonderful soldering iron back here. Heiko makes a thermal wire stripper. So I may just break down today and buy a new one. Um, I've had nothing but problems, honestly, out of this one um, over time. Uh, um, I had an upper element completely burn out one time. I had a little had the thing break loose right here where it's kind of um, the elements made onto the handle. That broke loose one time and I've had a couple of these uh, little elements on the end go out. So uh, I may just try something new this time. But in the meantime, um, since I can't get to wiring this thing up this weekend, I'm basically going to go ahead and get the other chassis up to this point. So um, I'll show you that as we as we go along that journey. I got to thinking maybe these uh, screws and whatnot were getting corroded and uh, the two because I didn't find a break in one of these. So I thought, you know, I kind of pulled them off the end here. I took a wire wheel 
brush to clean the ends here and started cleaning these up. And somewhere in the back of my mind it popped in, hey, I think you've got a spare set of blades. So uh, I went digging and a couple years ago I guess I had bought a spare set of blades and here they are. And they come with the uh, with the screws. So I'm going to get these put on and uh, fingers crossed this will fix the issue. Okay, we got the new screws on here. Let's see how it does here. I'll just hit the uh, on button. One's glowing red, the other's glowing red. You bring them together, you pull the wire through it, and out comes your, um, and this thing heats up quick and cools down quick. It's all designed to be able to, you know, lay back down on your bench and not burn you. Um, it's supposed to heat up within just two or three seconds and cool back down within four or five. But, um, yeah, so I don't know whether it was the corroded screws, which I ended up, um, cleaning up with a wire brush but then ultimately ended up replacing so I don't know if it was that or uh, maybe one of these is bad but I'm going to put these back in here and hang on to them in case one does break one day well maybe I'll have a spare but hey that'll enable me to uh, dive back into this thing and get going I will tell you this whole PTFE wiring the silver um, Teflon wiring is not an inexpensive route um, you know, just a little thing of cable like this, um, and I think this one's about 25 feet long with number 24 gauge wire. I mean, that little thing right there will cost you 10 or 12 dollars um, if you're lucky. Um, so, you know, easily four or five hundred dollars worth of wire here in this uh, little bin. These little things new are about 275 or 300 dollars. Um, I picked this one up used years ago for like a hundred bucks, but. Uh, like I said, I've had some challenges with it too. So, and, and I was looking at the Heikos. Um, my new one's like $375. So getting into this, not the cheapest thing on this earth, but I really like the uh, the quality of the results that it turns out at the end of the day. Okay, we're starting to wire up the output transformer. I've routed um, but the plate and screen um, grid wires over here. And I've soldered these two on. Um, you end up with... Um, Let's see here, three goes on the, um, the plate and uh, four being the green screen grid and the same over here. And um, as you can see, I haven't soldered this last one here yet, but you can kind of see I've, I've taken the wire around the loop and bent it all the way around and then used a pair of pliers um, kind of like this to uh, close it loose close the loop. Um, I always like to make physical connections with wires, not physical connections with solder. But, uh, yeah. We'll keep going away at it. Okay, if you want to follow along on the amplifier, maybe understand a little bit how it works. You actually feed here coming off the high voltage power supply at uh, 480 volts. You feed up to the red into the center tap of the uh, output transformer. And then what happens is, from that, you kind of go through the amount of plate um, load resistor here, which is just the windings in the coil, up to number three on this KT88, and down through the same amount of um, load resistance here to number three on this KT88. So this ends up being your blue wire, and then this being your blue and white wire coming from here. And then at some percentage, and I'm not exactly sure, probably about 40%, um, of the winding you'll actually have a tap then that comes off here the green white that goes to number four which is your your screen grid and the same here uh, coming down coming off the green green um, it'll come down to your screen grid and what that does is it uh, puts a, um, a you know a higher potential here on the um, screen grid than the grid but less than the plate um, and then the other side of this transformer which will wire up next as you can see black is common um, 4 ohm, which we're going to tap off to the side. It'll still be there, but we're not going to use it. Um, then we've got the orange, which will be the 8 ohm, the one we're going to use, and yellow, which will be the 16 ohm, which we're not going to use. We'll just tap it off to the side. So, still be there in the future if somebody needs it. If you'll notice, you've also got to have a tap for this, a place mounted for the 16 ohm wire, because you will feed off of it and tap all the way back here through this circuit. Um, it goes here, a little bit of a voltage divider here um, through this 100 ohm, 1000 ohm resistor and the 680k and this little uh, capacitor here and it comes back and it brings it back in all the way back to the input here of the original um, 
grid on the 6AN7. So, you know, that's your negative feedback loop is what that is, kind of the global negative feedback in this case. And uh, you can see here, coming out of the output transformer, blue wire here on number three, um, just like it mentioned right here, blue wire coming to number three. Um, the green wire going to number four here, uh, which is your screen grid. And then the same thing with the uh, the blue white over here to number three, um, and the green white over here to number four. And then really with all that you have left coming out of that transformer hole, is the red wire, which was the center tap for the plate, and that'll end up feeding off of the high voltage power supply off of uh, one of these boards once we get it uh, mounted in in place. So for right now, I'm just going to leave this out of the way. Now you can see here, I've been cleaning. I just used some uh, alcohol on a uh, paper towel, but I've been cleaning the wax that was on these wires. They, uh, for whatever reason, years ago, they had uh, kind of wax coated them and they were getting pretty yucky. Okay, coming out of the other side of this transformer, the output transformer, if you'll notice here, got black, I'm sorry, black, brown, yellow, and orange, and there's four connections here I'm, I can make. One is the black on the output speaker terminal here, one is the red on the output speaker terminal, which I'm going to use for 8 ohm, and then I've got two more places mounted here on a two-piece two terminal strip or a two-prong terminal strip, and that's where I'm going to tag off the eight, um, the four ohm and the 16 ohm. I'll probably put the um, four ohm maybe up the top here and the 16 down bottom because I'm going to end up feeding off of that for a um, for the actual negative feedback loop. So let's get the black as we look here onto this black lug right here. Let's get the um, orange, which is going to be the um, eight ohm. Let's get it mounted on here. Let's get the yellow down bottom here for 16 ohm, and let's get the brown up top here. Um, basically, just tagging them away um, out of out of out of use. Now, if you will notice, um, got all four wires good and stripped, and if you'll notice the black here, I've wrapped it all the way around this lug. So the wires actually physically wrapped around the lug. The same with the orange here, and I've not soldered them on yet, and they're still holding themselves intact in place. So. It's kind of what you want, um, good physical connection with the wire, wrap it around there tight, uh, and then just use the solder to make the electrical connection. Okay, I've kind of zoomed in here a little bit on the uh, what I'm soldering here. But you have to actually get your soldering iron on this thing and sometimes hold it. Um, it this can take a whole minute or so sometimes for it to get good and hot here. I will tell you that putting a little bit of solder around the tip of your um, soldering iron will help. It's, uh, it'll help with heat flow and heat transfer. You'll see here in a minute this uh, the end will start. Um, what you ultimately want to happen is you want to be able to touch the threads of this thing with the actual soldering iron and have it flow without actually touching the soldering iron itself. That's when you'll know you've got this thing hot enough. And uh, like I say, you can watch here. It's taken a minute or so to get it, uh, to get that thing good and hot. There, it's starting to flow over here on the wire. See, I'm touching the wire, not the soldering iron. See, I'm touching the threads here. All right, that's good. We got a nice little drip below. That's good. Nice flow all the way around. There we go. Um, did end up with a little drip underneath from feeding a bunch of solder to it but those things are easy to pick up with a pair of pliers theoretically and take that out of the way and this thing will cool off and be soldered on there good and solid hopefully that makes sense to you okay you can see how I fed the brown wire over here and down and see then how I bent the wire over notice I did not start the bend way back here at the um, rubber sheathing. I left an equal amount above it and see how I pinched that closed right there. Then at that point it's just a matter of uh, bringing your soldering iron over here getting the, uh, you want to get the tab heated up first like it's doing and then let the solder flow down onto and into the wires like that. And that's a good solid solder connection right there. And you can watch the same here with the yellow. See how I've got about um, almost a half an inch stripped here? I'm going to feed it through this terminal strip. 
and then I'm going to take it right in the middle of that and I'm going to bend it over like this. Um, and then I'm going to bring it back around and I'm going to use a pair of pliers here to really tighten that up so that it's physically held by the wire like that and not the um, the actual there again I'm heating up the tab and the wire at the same time I'm hitting both of them and notice it's starting to flow onto the tab and then I feed it down and kind of cover the wire if you just heat up the wire and never get the tab good and hot you risk a uh, cold solder joint there so hopefully you can see how that turned out Okay, so we got all the outputs on the output transformer wired up. We've got all the inputs, with the exception of the uh, B plus um, or the uh, plate voltage. And so I'm going to move over here to the kind of the input side of the power transformer and wire it up next. Um, I know that the black one here, just from experience, will go down here and feed to the one side of the power strip. Uh, this other black one here will feed to this uh, side of the fuse holder right here. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the red yellow will go here onto the middle of this little uh, three lug strip and I'll have to look up the rest. That's the best I can do from memory. Okay, we've got all the uh, input side or primary side wired up here. We brought the black wire all the way up here to the switch. Um, the other black wire here comes to the fuse holder. Um, let's see, the yellow um, red here comes to the center tap of this. The black and uh, red and black stripe comes over here to one of the tabs on this little uh, what's using to replace the selenium rectifier. This wire was a little short from being cut out of the old amplifier, so I ended up having to bend this tab over a little bit to make some room for it. And then you've got two wires, two red wires that feed over here into the rectifier, into uh, pins four and pin six here of the rectifier. And I think that's uh, that's it for the input side here. We've still got the uh, certainly the choke here, um, two wires, and we've got the uh, the output side of the transformer here to get wired up. All right, we've got the outputs wired up. The greens come over here to number two. And number seven on the KT88s, and you'll end up uh, creating another wire twisted over here to number two and seven for the heaters. And then um, you got your output here, the five volt for um, for the rectifier, and it actually goes to number two and number eight here on this rectifier. So um, all wired up. All I've got left now is the two wires that go to the choke. One of those will come over here and go to uh, I think number eight, and the other one will actually go on to the PC board. And then we've got this. Uh, this wire here that will end up going to the uh, to the power supply board as well. But for the most part, here you can see uh, nice clean wiring. Um, you know this I got to do something with, and I've still got a little opportunity to tidy them up. But I've got the heater coil, the heater wires twisted really well and tight. So um, just the way Dynaco kind of laid it out. I mean, if you look at their picture here, <laughs> it's kind of the same. Um, you know, I'd love to do a little bit better with routing of wires and whatnot. The problem is. These are the wires coming out of the transformers, and they're a certain fixed length. And uh, it's not like you've got a lot of a lot of play with those to uh, to begin with. That's kind of the way they came from Dynaco. Well, I'm a little bit of a standstill again, and I don't think I can overcome this one. I'm going to have to order some stuff. Let me show you what I'm running into. Um, these SDS boards here mount on top of, <laughs> believe it or not these little screws right here that the original transformer um, you can see this is one transformer screw right here one right here one here and one right here and the way this SDS board works is it comes along in here and it mounts on top of that screw and it goes over here on the other side I have to tuck it underneath there let me see if I can get it yeah and that's what it does it mounts on top of those screws however uh, looks good and uh, nice and clean, nice and neat. The issue is the screws I have here are um, 8 32nd, um, 3 8 inch long, and I need half inch long. I need something that comes on up a little bit taller right here 
so that one I can put a little bit of standoff. I need to put a, a bolt underneath of it to stand it off a little bit and then I need to be able to put a bolt on top of it like this so that I'm not squishing down into these wires with these uh because there's high voltage sitting on these little things so I need something uh uh, half inch maybe not quite I may need three quarter inch right here for these two screws so I'm gonna go over here and uh, see if I can find some okay I kind of pulled out the 3 8 inch screw that I had in there and I kind of stuck a uh, screwdriver up through the hole and measured it about where I wanted it up in here you can kind of see it moving around there because I don't want to go too far and I'll be up into this uh, up into the wiring here of the output thing and then I kind of pulled it out and I used a ruler and measured that and three quarters of an inch is what I need to uh, to get the height I need on the boards in here but yet not get up into the post here as you can see up underneath here um, and it'll give me good clearance over these wires so you're not squishing them with the sharp little pointy uh, solder tips here on the back side of this board so I can put a, actually put a piece of cardboard or something over these to uh, kind of protect them a little bit but three quarters is what I need and uh, I'll need two per amplifier so I'll need four total let's jump over here and see what we can find uh, I did some searching on eBay and uh, looks like these eight and eight thirty seconds about three quarters I can get a quantity of a hundred of them for seven dollars and fifty cent with free shipping and it looks like they'll be here by next weekend so uh, hopefully I can get those in uh Get these things wrapped up next weekend will be the game plan. Uh, kind of puts me at a standstill on this amp, so what I'm going to do is jump over and kind of catch the other amp up to this point. As you can see, we're flying along now, putting in the uh, tube sockets mounted in the board here. Going to flip this one over and keep mounting stuff. But the good thing is, once you get one pretty far along, that's the reason I like to completely build one amp first. Get it working. Then it's just easy to kind of visually follow that one to put this one together and the mistakes you made before like not mounting the choke for the transformer <laughs> um, etc um, you know you kind of live and learn and uh, same thing with this little uh, fuse holder here so um, you kind of got to live and learn and uh, doing better the second time around. Well, we got the RCA jack and the uh, preamp input. By the way, I do not plan to fully wire these preamp um, jacks up. I am going to wire the one for the uh, bias set, but the rest I'm not going to wire up because it's just potential for more more wires, more noise, more little antennas mounted. And I doubt anybody's going to plug in a a um, an older style preamp into one of these. So. I'll check with the owner first though, but um, this is a little frustrating. Um, got this thing mounted in and then this little, uh, notice how these screw out and, uh, and then gives you room down here to actually insert a, you know, a wire in. I doubt people would use them that way, likely just plugging in banana jacks, but this one's not working. It's locked up. Um, and so uh, this little kit I got from Dyna Kit did not work out so well. Um, Good news, I got a whole bin full of them that I keep spare of just uh, two prong speaker jacks and uh, lo and behold we got the same thing so I'm going to replace that one and throw this one in the garbage. And we got everything mounted in. If you notice here now these uh, new ones, they screw in and out like they're supposed to. I don't know what was wrong with that other one. Um, and I also got the front power switch mounted in and uh, just mimicking everything the same way, putting everything on the same side. Uh, like this little tab, putting it down just like we did on the first one, etc. Um, even even like the uh, the little grounding tab on this side of this thing here, making sure it's on the same side like we did on this one. Okay, about five minutes on the grounding wheel, very tediously getting around this thing without hitting the uh, actual uh, coil or paper grinding, but I uh, got it all cleaned up. It was uh, pretty. Pretty uh, gunked up all the way around. Um, so happy with how that turned out. Going to get it mounted in next. Remember, I had to mount this and this and this and this before I mount the transformers. And midstream, I'm putting the AR, um, the Dynacos together. My son's home from college and uh, took his stereo and turntable off to his dorm room with him. So he's wanting something back in his room. So I went and dug up an old ARX table that I had but uh, 
the well as dry as can be and uh, needs a new belt on it. Luckily I've got a new ARD turntable belt. So clean out the well, lube it up, put a new belt on it, talk the belt, and uh, get this thing running again. Just a uh, sidestep along the way. Okay, we've now got the um, output side of these with the cloth wire soldered up. Cloth wire is not as easy to work with. The stuff gets a little stiff and brittle with age. You got to make sure it doesn't get too brittle because uh, breaks in it can, uh, you know, cause uh, breaks in the insulation can cause them um, kind of arch over or sparks um, flying between your wire and chassis or whatnot. But um. We've got these all soldered in. We've got the black here, we've got the orange, we've got the yellow way over here on the top, and we got the brown one down here on the bottom. Um, just like we had over here on the other amplifier. So all intact and in place. I will tell you, sometimes working with this old cloth covered wire like this, um, sometimes you have to kind of go with the process of elimination <laughs> to figure out the, uh, the colors. So just kind of break it down one at a time and um, it's pretty easy to see which ones have stripes on them, which ones don't, which ones might be green, which ones might be red. Um, you know, this one looks a little blue, but it was originally black, um, that type thing. You, you can, uh, one at a time, you'll, you'll sort them out for the most part. Um, I can tell you like right here, this one, see how it's uh, got a nice split in it right here? I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna have to cut that one off back here and splice in a piece, cause you, you just wouldn't want that, uh, that hanging around loose in your amplifier. Okay, these were the green wires um, that go to the um, plate and screen, and they are just uh, so old and brittle that uh, they won't bend at all. They kind of break, and the sheathing on the outside breaks off of them. So what I've done is I've cut them off down here near the transformer, and I'm a little concerned about just the edge of this metal here and how brittle that um, insulation is. So I've cut a couple pieces of green uh, heat shriek tubing and what I'm going to end up doing is basically sliding these things over. Um, I don't know if I can do it here with one hand with the camera, but I'm going to slide them over and go way down inside the transformer and then I'm going to shrink them up so that uh, so I've got an extra layer of insulation here along the edge right here. Hopefully you can see here now what I'm talking about. I've kind of for each one of these wires, I've ran a piece of insulation down in there and heated these things up. So, uh, no worry about the edge of the insulation here rubbing against the edge of this, uh, you know, transformer bell and or the casing here on the bottom of the chassis. And I got what I got to do is splice in two wires here and we'll run them down. Okay, I've cut a few pieces of wire here to use for the extending the, uh, and if you'll notice, I've got my, uh, oops. Let me turn the power switch on. I always keep this thing turned off um, on a power strip when not using it. But as you can see here, you kind of heat the wire, you twist it around, and then off comes the uh, off comes the sheathing. Really easy. Um, same thing on this end. You kind of heat it, heat both sides up, twist the wire around one time, boom, right off. These things are amazing when. Uh, when done right. <laughs> okay, so how easy it was to strip that. Let me give you a micro demonstration here <laughs> of uh, somebody trying to strip this wire. This is just some PTFE wire with a traditional old um, um, set of wire strippers here or whatnot. It's kind of, oh, well, that was too quick and bit right through it, but. Yeah, so where's my pliers at here? You cannot. <clears throat> the best I pulled it, and finally I got it. But it, I mean that stuff is heat impregnated in there, and it's just really tough without the the thermal stripper. And as you can see, I've got the new wire spliced on here that we can run. Yeah. You know, it, it, Kind of hate how these turn out sometimes, but just these old, you can see it right here, these old brittle wires on these uh, cloth covered transformer, cloth covered wire transformers just kind of turn out this way sometimes. But uh, uh, nonetheless, fully functional, um, works well, just um, preserving uh, vintage stuff is the way this works out.
Okay, I'm going to show you a little trick. This wire right here coming out of the transformer was kind of brittle and broke right along here. Similar to how this one right here is kind of broke right along in this spot. As you can see there. Um, so what I've done is I've cut it off where it was broke here, you can see. And now I've got this little piece of wire in my hand and I'm sitting here trying to figure out, gosh, is that the blue wire or is that the green wire? Which one is? I can kind of tell on the striped ones that that's the blue stripe and this is the green stripe, but I'm really struggling on this. One of the things you can do, let me push this out of the way, is you can kind of take a uh, X-Acto knife and kind of come along and rub on the coating a little bit. And it'll take you down and, and uh, it's kind of hard to see here in the lighting, but you can tell that that's blue once you've scraped a little bit of the coating off right there and get into it and uh, help you out figuring out which color wires are which. So sometimes even if the wire is still intact and not broken you can use just kind of scratch out on the surface a little bit with an X-Acto and rough up the cloth a little bit and the, uh, the color will pop back out. And as you can see, pull out my blue spool here. Um, I'm going to use the little heat gun here and uh, get both sides hot. Twist it one time pulls right off and now we can uh, bring this back over here strip this off with the wire strippers here and be careful you don't want to make sure you're not cutting into the metal down at the bottom but typically you just want to get enough there to uh, these things are a pain I'll tell you what the old cloth wires get uh, get brittle and there it goes don't like to uh, don't like to shed themselves a lot. And what I always do is um, I come along and I kind of tend the wires a little bit um, with some solder. Yeah, get that working in there really good. There we go. And similarly on my little piece of plastic on my silver wire here, I'll tend it just a hair. Doesn't take much to, uh, to tend the silver wire, that's for sure. And then uh, get a little bit of solder and join these two together and put them in uh, matr matrimony. <laughs> they are glued together for good there. And then what I would do is come down here and dig out a little bit of uh, just a little bit of um, blue heat shrinking. Take it down over the top here, get it over both pieces of wire, and shrink it on down. Now my wire is nice and flexible, long enough to get to where I need to because i got to go to uh, socket pin over here, number three, and then uh, Similarly, the blue and white looks fine though. I'll actually be able to work with the original wire here and get it over here and get it mounted. Actually, the blue and white one's going to come way over here to this tube socket. Um, I'll actually have to have the green one, which is right here. And oops, look at that. The green one's got a big break in it. So I'm going to go through the same process on it real quick. Okay, as you can see, I've ended up replacing all the wires coming out of there. Um, this is sort of the um, original green. This is the new green and white. This is the new blue and white. And this will be the new B plus wire that uh, fed out of it, the long red one. So once we get four of these soldered in, just these four, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll be done with what I can do at this point. And this amp will be caught up with this amp. And you can see here just a hodgepodge of uh, wires. You can see this red here. That was kind of broken right along in here. And if you try to bend it, it just... Uh, it just snaps and you can see the conductor there in the middle so just an old old and brittle but doesn't mean these transformers aren't good it just means the long wires coming out of them have gotten brittle over time with heat um, you know, we, we've done some surgical replacement here of their uh, their length and they will be perfectly fine trust me I've done I've probably done 50 or more amps this way in over the years Okay, and with the exception of uh, the B plus wire here and the two choke wires here, the new B plus wire here and the two choke wires here, they are all wired up. Um, 
you know, a few more wires to connect from the little circuit board here up into this and the the bias connection um, and then the actual bias pod itself and then the power cord but uh, and then the actual power well, um, power boards that we talked about earlier that I've got to mount in here right down in here and that same scenario here I need longer bolts for these things to mount on too we'll just wait on those to show up this week in the mail and we can wrap these things up next weekend um, I think this is video six hopefully you're enjoying it and maybe you learned a little something along the way certainly huge differences between um, cloth wire from the uh, 60s um, and before the uh, you know kind of plastic coated wire along the way that happened um, 70s 80s 90s and then uh, the modern stuff here which would be the uh, teflon coated ptfe um, silver coated wire. This stuff's just amazing. Uh, it really doesn't get any better. You got to have some special tools to work with that stuff, but uh, absolutely, uh, it's my favorite thing to work with. It's actually kind of therapeutic and fun to sit down and uh, and work with that stuff. But thanks everybody. We'll get a uh, video seven up next week uh, when we get these things uh, wrapped up and uh, playing and sounding great. Uh, Till then, have fun. Hope everybody's enjoying, and uh, thanks for watching. Sorry, I had to make one little last pose here. These things are turning out great. Um, chocolate transformers. Um, I just think they, they look amazing. And uh, won't be long and these things will be alive. Thanks again, everybody. See you soon.